This is part two in our series of lectures on the part of section 5.1 dealing with equivalent sets. In this lecture, we'll give a few examples involving cardinality of sets. So let's consider the following example. We're going to let E denote the set of even integers, and we let O denote the set of odd integers. The question is, do they have the same cardinality? Well, if you're thinking intuitively in terms of cardinality expressing the number of elements in the sets, you might think that they have the same cardinality because half of the set of integers are even and half of the set of integers are odd. Or on the other hand, you might think of uh, there being one more even integer than an odd integer because that uh, integer zero is even and it, somehow it feels like there's one extra uh, integer. Um, so maybe you're not quite sure. But it turns out the answer is that they do have the same cardinality. And so if you believe that they do have the same cardinality, in order to prove it, you have to show that there's a bijection from the set of even integers to the set of odd integers. Your intuition, one way or the other, doesn't really count. And uh, here's the solution. The answer is yes, they have the same cardinality, and that's because I can define the function f from the set of even integers into the set of odd integers by just simply mapping x to x plus 1. Okay, and, and then it's just simply a matter of writing a rigorous proof that that is a bijection. I'm going to leave that as an exercise for you to do, to show that it's a bijection. But note that in order to prove that it's a bijection, there are actually three things, and not just two things, for you to do. Of course, you'd have to prove that it's both injective and surjective, but you also have to prove that it really does what we say it does, that it really maps E into O. I mean, just because I say that it maps E into O doesn't mean um, that I'm right about that. It requires a little proof. You have to show that if x is even, then x plus 1 is, is odd. It's not difficult to show, but it, it, it is something that should be included if you're writing out a formal argument. Okay, so let's do this other example. Do z and e have the same cardinality? The set of all integers and the set of even integers. Well, intuitively, you might think that the answer is no. Uh, there seem to be about twice as many integers as there are even integers. But you'd be wrong if you argue just in terms of intuition. In fact, they do have the same cardinality, and in order to prove it, you have to find an explicit bijection from the set of integers into the set of even integers. So can you think of a, a function that maps z into e that has a chance at being a bijection? Well, the answer is if you map each x in the integers to 2x, that seems like it ought to be a bijection. So, why don't you put your video on pause and uh, see if you can prove that the function from x to 2x is a bijection. In other words, write up a formal proof that th there is a bijection from z to e. When you come back, we can compare our solutions. So here's my solution. I say yes, z and e do have the same cardinality, and we're going to prove that the function f that maps z to e by x goes to 2x is a bijection. So you really have to do three things. You first have to prove that it maps z into e, and that's because if x is any integer, then by definition 2 times x is an even integer. So next we show that it is injective, so for that purpose, you give yourself two elements in the domain in here. You assume that the f values are the same, which is to say this. And then you try to deduce that x1 equals x2, and I think that's immediate just simply by dividing by 2. So that proves that f is injective. To see that f is surjective, you give yourself something in the codomain, and you prove that it comes from something in the domain. So you give yourself a y even. That means that there exists an integer k such that it's 2 times k. 
and um, it follows that if you take f of that k that you get back y by definition and so that proves that f is surjective okay and that proves that z and e do in fact have the same cardinality